Right now at 5, we're back in the courtroom as the trial of a special agent accused of endangering the public for shooting a suspect continues. The cold is here and the clouds are sticking around. When can we expect warmer temperatures and the sun return? But first at 5, six people are missing after a container ship crashes into a Maryland bridge overnight, sending the structure plummeting to the river below. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. Thanks for staying with us, everyone. Eric is off this week. The bridge collapse is where we begin. Overnight in Baltimore, the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsing into a river after a container ship crashed into one of its pillars. Two people were rescued from the water, but six others remain missing. The bridge came down just before 1.30 in the morning. Initial reports show the container ship lost its ability to steer and issued a mayday call, which closed the bridge to vehicle traffic. But construction workers were still on the bridge when it collapsed. Ryan Hughes shows us more of the aftermath. Search and rescue efforts for missing construction workers are still underway after the stunning collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in the middle of the night. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg and the NTSB are here at the scene. And what they're going to look at and begin to collect is information on vessel operations, safety history, safety record. The whole bridge just fell down. Video shows the moment a massive container ship struck support pillars of the critical overpass. John Zafia is a crane operator at the port and felt the impact from his nearby home. It's just like an aftershock of an earthquake and a loud explosion. The crew aboard the 974-foot vessel notified state officials the ship had lost propulsion and that hitting the bridge was possible. There's a ship approaching and just lost their steering. Maryland's governor says that heads up helped save lives. We're thankful that between the May Day and the collapse that uh, that we had officials who were able to to begin to stop the flow of traffic. 12 million vehicles crossed Baltimore's Key Bridge last year and the port itself handled a record amount of cargo. It's not closed until further notice. President Biden promised federal aid. It's my intention that federal government will pay for the entire cost of reconstructing that bridge. The president said 15,000 jobs depend on that port. That includes Zafia's. That's going to affect all of our work down there. Officials say the bridge was fully up to code. Ryan Hughes, CBS News, Baltimore County, Maryland. A reminder that we've sent out updates throughout the day on the bridge collapse on our Channel 3000 mobile app. You can download it for free and make sure to turn on push alerts so that you never miss a breaking news story, whether it is local or national. Well, all that rain we've seen the last day and a half has let up, but it was much needed to help with our drought conditions. We expect a few days of sunshine next, but with chillier temperatures. Let's get a look at the forecast. Chief Meteorologist Alex Harrington is on the weather patio. Hi, Alex. Hey there, Susan. Sorry, I'm frowning a bit out here because it is cold. It feels drastically different, as I promised this time yesterday. And I've got a couple flurries out here right now. The bird feeders are moving behind me. The winds roaring and the temperatures are falling out there. Let's take a look. We can see those flurries verifying right over the center part of Dane County, right here at the studio. They're falling right now and they're blowing around here in the winds and those snow flurries are across portions of southwestern Wisconsin to our friends up towards Richland Center, Sparta up towards Camp Douglas, but not expecting widespread snow shower activity and no accumulation is expected tonight. Just a flurry or two to remind us that winter ended not too long ago. It's still hanging on across southern Wisconsin, or at least it's going to hang on for a little while. There you can hear the wind and probably in my microphone. Gusty breezes, 30 to 35 miles per hour, approaching 40 in some cases, and it's these breezes that are bringing in those colder temperatures. I said we'd be in the upper 30s by this time tonight, last night, and here we are, 38 in Madison, lower 30s off towards the west where this cold air is coming from. It will be a cold start for your Wednesday morning, only in the 20s, 
when we warm up again and when we can crack into that sunshine. I've got those details coming up in a few minutes. All right, Alex, thank you. The trial into whether DCI Special Agent Mark Wagner endangered the public when he opened fire on Quadron Wilson in Madison more than two years ago continued today. Wagner has been charged with endangering the public for shooting at Wilson as part of a multi-agency arrest operation. Wilson had been wanted for drug-related crimes when agents surrounded his vehicle and attempted to arrest him. Wagner was the first in a line in a string of agents and is accused of firing into the car carelessly. Today, DCI agent Brian Volenberg testified, sharing what he saw in Wagner moments after the shooting. He was, like, shell-shook. Like, he was very, you could tell, um, upset or, like, in shock of what happened. He had kind of a blank stare on his face. Wilson survived the shooting and is serving a three-year prison sentence after being convicted on two drug-related charges. This week, Democratic Senator Tammy Baldwin will be campaigning across the state. Senator Baldwin is making stops in Fort Atkinson tomorrow. On Thursday, she'll be in Richland Center and Viroqua. And on Friday, Senator Baldwin will make her final stops in Reedsburg and Wisconsin Dells. Right now, Baldwin is in the middle of her campaign for re-election. Her opponent is Republican businessman Eric Hovde. In recent weeks, Hovde has campaigned as a Washington outsider, saying he can fix D.C.'s problems for Wisconsinites. Meanwhile, Senator Baldwin campaigned on her bipartisan track record. Primary voters will see the candidates' names on their respective ballots next Tuesday. And with the election one week out, voters in Beloit can get a free ride to the polls next week with Beloit Transit. Anyone riding the bus on Beloit routes will not have to pay the bus fare. The free service was approved last week by the Beloit City Council. Free bus rides to the polls will also be offered during the elections in August and November. A big boost in research funding for UW-Madison. The university will receive more than 50 $56 million in federal money for research initiatives. It's made possible by a pair of bipartisan bills signed into law earlier this month by President Joe Biden to keep the government funded through the end of September. Of the $56 million, more than half is going toward the Great Lakes Bioenergy Research Center, a bioenergy center inside the Wisconsin Energy Institute on campus. It's a huge collaboration across multiple um, bioenergy research centers. So we're part of a consortium. And um, this is one of our signature um, projects at UW-Madison. And we really are looking at using um, for bio, making uh, different types of biofuels. The passage of these bills allows the campus to build on its research in several high-demand areas. U.S. Supreme Court justices today weighed access to abortion medication, mifepristone. The, doctor, the group of doctors opposed to abortions sued after the FDA eased restrictions on the pill. Natalie Brand is in our nation's capital with the debate. demonstrated outside the U.S. Supreme Court during arguments on access to the abortion drug mifepristone. We thought it was really important to support women and the right to obtain abortion safely. The number one premise for me is that chemicals should never be used to take innocent life. In 2016, the FDA extended the window women can take mifepristone from 7 to 10 weeks. And during the pandemic, it said an in-person doctor's visit was not needed, allowing mail-order pharmacies to ship the drug nationwide. Aaron Hawley, who argued on behalf of some doctors opposed to abortion, says the FDA violated the law when it relaxed restrictions. It's particularly appalling. It's the FDA based its 2021 decision to remove that in-person visit on studies it acknowledged were, quote, not adequate. But FDA's ultimate conclusion was that mifepristone could safely be dispensed without in-person visits. It had voluminous evidence, I think, to support that conclusion in 2021. And there's been no contrary evidence that's been introduced. The government also argued the doctors who brought the suit don't have legal standing because they were unlikely to be harmed by the changes. Under federal law, no doctors can be forced against their consciences to 
perform or assist in an abortion, correct? Yes, we think that federal conscience protections provide broad coverage here. During arguments, both conservative and liberal justices focused on the issue of standing. Legal analysts say they appear inclined to side with the FDA. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the Supreme Court. Still ahead tonight at 5, an adopted puppy is helping spread love. Coming up, how a dog left on the streets found its forever home and with it helped a man propose to his girlfriend. The stock market bounced back today. The market forces pushing this rise are on hopes that the possible Federal Reserve cuts will keep profits high. The Dow Jones rose 88 points, the Nasdaq following with a 45-point rise, the S&P 500 also turning the curve and, and closing up 11 points. We'll be right back. At Blaine's Farm and Fleet, we get you outdoors because we get you. Whether you're ready to hit the road, tackle the yard, or start a new project, we get you the right products at the right prices. Like 36-pound bags of Estate Crabgrass Preventer, $32.99. 20-pound bags of Blaine's brand Cardinal Songbird Food, $14.99. Rewards members save an extra buck. And five quarts of Blaine's Full Synthetic Motor Oil, $23.99. Just $20.99 for rewards members. We get you outdoors because we get you at Blaine's Farm and Fleet. It's easier to manage my chemo side effects since a great supportive care came to see me. They're taking the time to listen and talk about options for feeling better. A grace, caring every step of the way. Think Sloan's first. We've been with Sloan Implement since uh, uh, my father started farming, my grandfather started farming. They are a family business that's been around for generations, and that's very important to us. Think Sloan first now during deer season on a John Deere 1025R compact utility tractor. Your Sloan deal includes tractor, loader, plus a mower deck. Get 1.9% for 84 months. That's just $238 per month. Think Sloan's first. Create your perfect room for entertaining, relaxing, and more with patio enclosures. Right now, get up to $8,500 off your sunroom. Plus, enjoy exceptional financing. Call today. Patio enclosures. Our record high energy costs putting a squeeze on your fixed or limited incomes. While you haven't asked for it, the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund and your local energy assistance providers are here to help. No Wisconsin resident should ever have to face the challenge of living without heat or power or face homelessness. For a hand up, apply today. Catch the Bucks on broadcast TV when they square off with the Pelicans on your new local home for select Bucks games. Watch Giannis and the Bucks fly into NOLA to zap Zion and the soaring Pelicans. It's Dame Time in the Big Easy. Bucks, Pelicans, on your new local home for select Milwaukee Bucks games. Thursday, March 28th at 7 on Television Wisconsin. Coming up on News 3 Now, reaction to the bridge collapse in Baltimore. We speak one-on-one -on -one with the White House's infrastructure advisor. What could happen if changes aren't made across the country? Plus, a look at what's happening with local Wisconsin bridges. That's tonight at 6. News 3 Now brings you a preview of Wisconsin spring elections, what you need to know before heading to the polls on April 2nd. Plus analysis from both sides on the key issues today and moving forward to November. Campaign 2024, Battleground Wisconsin, tonight at 6.30. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. New questions tonight about why federal authorities raided two homes owned by entertainment mogul Sean Diddy Combs yesterday. This comes after months of multiple sexual misconduct allegations against him. Jared Hill shares what investigators know. All right, they just made their way in. 
Growing concerns today after armed Homeland Security agents raided the L.A. and Miami homes of music mogul Sean Diddy Combs Monday. Sources tell CBS News the simultaneous searches are part of a possible sex trafficking investigation by federal agents in New York. The fact that you see federal law enforcement raiding two of Sean Combs' homes indicates that they think that there is evidence of potential wrongdoing at those residents. You can see people in handcuffs outside of Combs' California property, though no sign of Diddy himself. For the past few months, Diddy, one of the biggest names in entertainment, has been embroiled in numerous sexual assault allegations. Last November, his former girlfriend, R&B singer Cassandra Ventura, better known as Cassie, filed a federal lawsuit alleging a long history of violence and abuse in the nearly decade-long relationship. She reached a settlement with Combs while the entertainer denied any wrongdoing. Since then, Combs has been accused of sexual misconduct in five different civil suits. Jared Hill, CBS News, New York. The cost of getting a roof over your head is coming close to the ceiling. Home prices went up 6% in January compared to 12 months prior. Officials say that is the biggest yearly hike since the end of 2022, and it comes on the heels of a 5.6% annual increase in December. That's according to the S&P CoreLogic case Schiller National Home Price Index. Over to Alex now with a look at the forecast. Maybe a hot cup, hot chocolate or something yeah, would hit the stage. Chocolate. It's raw out there today. Yes. Oh, it does not. It's a shock to the system, Susan, out there when we've been 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, all through February. And then you got a day like today where we're in the 30s and then 20s tonight. Yeah, it definitely feels cold out there. That's why we got cold and chilly and the three things you need to know. A little hope they're milder as we head towards your Thursday and even warmer as we head towards your Friday. With the cold and needing that hot chocolate, as you look outside, you might see a couple of snowflakes. I just had a few of them out there on the patio. Those snowflakes are a little bit more plentiful up north of 14 Richland Center, Boaz, out towards Ithaca and points towards the north. Not expecting widespread accumulation or anything like that this evening. Just a reminder that winter <laughs> just transitioned to spring and winter is not too far in our distant past. Here comes the cold air sweeping in, as I mentioned last night at Wood, 38 in Madison, lower 30s, even upper 20s, our friends out towards Viroqua, and that's where the cold air is coming from. Currently here in Madison, we've dropped down to 38, a couple sprinkles out there. West-southwest winds right now, that's sustained at 13. Just go outside and listen, and you hear the roar in the trees. The gusts are much, much higher out there. Planning your evening, hold on to your hats as temperatures fall through the 30s, a sprinkle or a flurry, not out of the question. But now we want to track some optimism here. When can we get the sun to come back? Not at 7 o'clock in the morning, or at least not likely. Temperatures very cold in the lower to middle 20s. But the hope is over southwest Wisconsin, seeing some breaks in the skies. By the time we get towards your noon, Madison, we might have a peak or two of sunshine. And then as we go towards about this time tomorrow night, 5 o'clock on the nose, upper 30s trade around 40 degrees, some sunshine hopefully to end your day here. If we don't get the sunshine, our high temperatures will stay in the 30s. So just a heads up on that. Then as we take look, a look at what rain we had, I mentioned last night that areas along 39 and 90 and points off towards the east would stand the best chance. Here at the studio, we had a little bit over an inch. That verified in areas to the east saw the heavier rain. Jefferson and Janesville coming in around 2. A lot of friends in southwest Wisconsin. Unfortunately, you did not get the drops with this weather system, but we do have more weather, wet weather in the forecast. This weather system's on the way out of here. Enter another weather system Friday going into Saturday, and then an unsettled start to the next work week to bring some more raindrops and maybe some snowflakes too. Turning much colder overnight, and our recap here is the bottom line. Chilly midweek and then warmer by the time we get to Friday. How warm? We'll do 55 degrees, then we'll do lower 50s on your Saturday. Next week, unsettled as we get towards Easter Sunday and beyond, we'll be keeping an eye on those weather systems as there could be a mix of rain and a little bit of snow as well. Traffic here looking pretty good eastbound and westbound at a good clip, about 60 miles per hour. Swinging down to the south on 39 towards Janesville, going good at about 70 miles per hour. And let's see what's going on up on 90 uh, up towards the Dells. 
at about 70 miles per hour. And again, the precipitation's out of here, so driving conditions, Susan, should be good for the rest of tonight. All right, good news. Thank you, Alex. A heartwarming story out of Colorado now. When a puppy was abandoned on the streets of Colorado Springs, the nearby Humane Society came to its rescue. But little did one employee know the puppy was going to help him propose to his girlfriend. Lindsay Grury shows us how. His name is Banjo, but it probably should be Cupid. <laughs> because in just 10 weeks of life, he's gone from alone and homeless on the streets to helping his new mom and dad get engaged. Jason, who works at the Humane Society, had been trying to figure out for months how to propose to his girlfriend. <laughs> when Banjo arrived as a six-week-old stray, lightning struck. Or was it Cupid's arrow? I just thought he was so cute. And so I'm like, I want to adopt this dog. And the gear started rolling, and I figured um, it would just be the cutest way to propose. So first, he had to get a yes to question number one. Just sending me photos after photo after photo. Just, here's this puppy. He's really cute. I need him. <laughs> then it was time to get the puppy proposal in place for question number two. I went and got his tag engraved with the will you marry me and I was hiding it around in my work backpack for about a whole week hoping she wouldn't find it and risky. <laughs> it was. And after two weeks Banjo was old enough to be adopted. Jason was like I want to be the one to bring him home. So I'm like yeah that's fine. Now did you have any idea he was planning to propose? I did not. I set up the camera when she was on her way home and got ready for, you know, one of the biggest moments of my life. He hands me the puppy and I'm just so excited. And then when he tells me to look at the dog tag, I'm just like, oh, cool, he got the dog tag already. <laughs> look, I keep the little taggies on me. I mean, I'm going to keep Will you marry me? <gasps> oh, my God. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I started crying. I was speechless. I felt just a lot of joy, like everything was right in the world. Proposing via puppy is the best proposal ever. So congratulations to Jason, Julia, and Banjo. Oh, that is such a great story. The couple says that Banjo, by the way, is going to be in their wedding as a ring bearer. Still ahead tonight at 5, a great British tradition is under threat. We'll share why scientists are racing to save the pint from the effects of climate change. News 3 Now First Worn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. I'm Jonathan Lawson, here to tell you about life insurance through the Colonial Pen Program. If you're age 50 to 85 and looking to buy life insurance on a fixed budget, remember the three Ps. The three what? The three Ps. What are the three Ps? The three Ps of life insurance on a fixed budget are price, price, and price. A price you can afford, a price that can't increase, and a price that fits your budget. I'm 54 and was a smoker, but quit. What's my price? You can get coverage for $9.95 a month. I'm 65, retired, and take medications. What's my price? Also $9.95 a month. I just turned 80 and I'm on a fixed income. What's my price? $9.95 a month for you too. If you're age 50 to 85, call now about the number one most popular whole life insurance plan available through the Colonial Pen Program. Options start at $9.95 a month. That's less than 35 cents a day. You cannot be turned down because of your health. No medical exam, no health questions. Your acceptance is guaranteed. And this plan has a guaranteed lifetime rate lock. So your rate can never go up for any reason. Options start at $9.95 a month. Plus, you get a 30-day money-back guarantee. So call now for free information, and you'll also get this free beneficiary planner. Use this valuable guide to record your important information and give helpful direction to your loved ones with your final wishes. And it's yours free, just for calling. So call now for free information. Call 1-800-914-3131 for your free information and your free gift. That's 1-800-914-3131. There's no risk or obligation. 
1-800-914-3131. Call now. In a Class 3 casino, you're playing against the house, so there's no guarantee a player has to win ever. And in a Class 2 casino, the players play against each other and not the house. So someone always wins. So you're saying... He's saying if you want to win at something, you have to go to Ho-Chunk Gaming Madison, a Class 2 casino where someone has to win. How about this then? Ho-Chunk Gaming Madison. It all starts with a Chevy truck. Chevy Silverado with the Turbo Max engine and best-in-class standard torque. And Chevy Silverado HD with up to 14 available camera views. Do more in a Chevy truck. Get yours now. During Chevy truck season, get 0.9% financing on all 2023 and 2024 Silverado 1500 pickups. Or qualified lessees can get this Silverado for $4.99 a month. Watching News 3 Now at 5, moving forward. New at 5, scientists say climate change is threatening a last call on the Great British Pint, so they're working with the brewing industry to save it. CBS's Tina Krause has the story. When it comes to British tradition, pouring a pint runs deep, and scientists are in a race to keep it flowing as the climate keeps changing. Brewers want good tasting beer, so they need their hops to uh, produce the flavor profile that is particularly desirable for the um, beer that they hope to produce. But the hop plant doesn't do well in hotter, drier conditions that have hit the UK in recent decades, and production has plummeted. So researchers are isolating hundreds of hop genes, hoping to produce ranges that can stand up to climate change. So we have some new hop varieties here in these beakers. And hop breeders like Clara Hajdu are rushing to create new varieties, including an American one, and crossbreeding them with English hops that grow well in the current climate. If we can speed up this breeding process because we know what traits to look for in the DNA, it will be much easier to select those plants that we want to breathe again with. It's a technique that can take up to 10 years to develop a commercial beer, but brewers say without it, the future of the pint is in peril. I, I mean, I think without it, it's going to die off. I mean, those hops are vital to the British pint, but without that, we're just going to be importing beer and we won't have that culture here anymore. In a culture that craves tradition down to the very last drop, Brewers hope science can save the future of the treasured pint. Tina Krause, CBS News, London. And hops are in trouble across Europe. A study published last year found a nearly 20% plunge in production. Stay with us. Alex returns with a final check of your first worn forecast when we come back. A truck crash can be life-changing. If you've been injured, call Gruber Law Offices. We have a powerful team with the knowledge, resources, and history of results you'll need. Gruber Law Offices. One call, that's all. Hang on tight, Wisconsin, because fun just got a lot faster. It's Fast Play from the Wisconsin Lottery, an all-new style of lotto games that combine instant wins with the progressive jackpot. Playing is easy at any lottery retailer. Just print, play, and know if you're a winner instantly. The progressive jackpot starts at $10,000 and grows with each ticket sold. The share of the jackpot increases with the price of the ticket. Fast Play is available now only at Wisconsin Lottery Retailers. Get an 11% rebate on your bathroom remodel. Menards carries a wide variety of Delta tubs and showers sure to fit your lifestyle. They're designed with durability in mind. This low-maintenance, high-crop shower is on sale for $569.99 after rebate. Get style and durability at a budget-friendly price. This Huron vinyl plank flooring is waterproof, easy to install, and only $169 per square foot after 11% rebate. Save big money at Menards. Our record high energy costs putting a squeeze on your fixed or limited incomes. While you haven't asked for it, the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund and your local energy assistance providers are here to help. No Wisconsin resident should ever have to face the challenge of living without heat or power or face homelessness. 
for a hand up. Apply today. This month, we're looking for 200 homeowners interested in getting a new fence. We're offering up to $1,000 off, plus an upgrade of up to 10 free solar caps. Our fences outlast wood 3 to 1 and are backed by our extensive lifetime warranty. Call now or visit the website for your new fence today. Certain this is going to work? Nothing to it. For imprint certain? Certainty matters. For imprint is your home for promo gear to wow clients and inspire your team. Check out forimprint.com. For imprint for certain. Catch the Bucks on broadcast TV when they square off with the Pelicans on your new local home for select Bucks games. Watch Giannis and the Bucks fly into NOLA to zap Zion and the soaring Pelicans. It's Dame time in the Big Easy. Bucks, Pelicans, on your new local home for select Milwaukee Bucks games. Thursday, March 28th at 7 on Television Wisconsin. When a truck accident happens, the results can be catastrophic. Our dedicated and proven team is here to help, and there's never a fee until we win. Gruber Law Offices. One call, that's all. Coming up tonight on the CBS Evening News, we're here in Baltimore on the Pepsico River in front of the Francis Scott Key Bridge, and you can see it's just gone, totally collapsed. There is an active search and rescue operation ongoing right now because there are a number of people still missing. We'll have the very latest coming up on the CBS Evening News. And finally at 5, 15-year-old skateboarder Sky Brown was turning heads today in London, skating on a half pipe held up by two vintage London red buses <laughs> near the iconic Tower Bridge. Brown made headlines three years ago when she won a bronze Olympic medal at the Games in Tokyo in 2021. She has already qualified for this summer's Games in Paris. Love it. And coordination there. And you yes. need your coordination outside right now. If you step outside, take a look at our camera. Take a look at the flags just to the left of the Capitol. They are going in a direction. It's windy out there. I was just out in the patio earlier, and it is breezy out there. Temperatures 38. Couple sprinkles out there, Susan, right now. But not expecting appreciable amounts of water tonight. The big storm is done. The wind is bringing in colder temperatures. We'll start off in the lower 20s to start your Wednesday, so that's gonna be a shock to the system. But we warm back up as the sun comes back out by the time we get towards Thursday. As we head out towards Easter, a couple showers maybe later in Easter, and unsettled early next week, but we need the rain. We Even do. if it's rain or snow, we need the moisture. That's right. All right, thank you, Alex. Thanks for watching, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your evening. The CBS Evening News is coming up next, and we hope to see you back here tonight at six.